A few weeks had gone by since the incident with Mr. Johnson, and it had finally all but returned to normal. Mr. Hoff had made an excellent first impression on the engines and staff alike, always trying to come up with new ways to ensure their comfort and well-being, while also running things just as smoothly and efficiently as Mr. Starr did. While he had been a bit cautious and unsure of himself in the beginning of his job, he had gotten all the guidance he needed from the staff and engines to hone his skills, and before long he had full control of the ins and outs of the line, and could run the line by himself, much to the joy of the other engines who already felt like he was one of their own. At least, most did. In the time he had been in charge, Mr. Hoff had also made it a point to allow Virgil back onto the main stretch of the line to allow for the picking up of the goods needed to continue the restoration of the Eastwood branch. No sooner had Virgil stopped at the bridge leading to Spear had the volunteers flocked the poor engine to get started on repairing the bridge, wishing to try and make up for lost time. One morning, Virgil was sitting at the platform at Eastwood Junction, waiting for some volunteers to arrive from Redwick on Daria's morning run. He closed his eyes as he simmered in the morning sun, feeling a sense of pride and joy to have work picking up again and feeling like they were finally getting somewhere with all this work. All that was left to do was to line side up the spear on the main stretch of the branch, and they'd be done. He cracked a smile and almost dozed off when... After Virgil, are you there? Huh? What? What? Oh! Hi, Darius. S sorry, I, I didn't hear you coming. How are you? I'm pretty good, thank you. A bit tired having to cover for Pat's mail run while it's in the works, but other than that, I'm radiant. You seem happy today. Making good progress in the branch, then? Yep. After Mr. Hoff took over, I was able to make my chips down to Manifel again. We've finally been able to repair the bridge. So today, they're going to inspect the tunnel before I can get the all clear to continue up the spear. So with any luck, I'll have my shed back today. Well, I'll be. Those volunteers really know how to be efficient, that's for sure. They sure do. D did you say you've been covering for Pat? What's happened to him? Well, apparently he had to make an emergency stop on his first run with the mail train when he came up with that ridiculous ghost story of his. The emergency brake did some damage to his brakes and wheels, hence his trip to the works. Yikes, that can't have been fun. Yeah, emergency stops never are fun. But they found further signs of wear and more of his parts, probably due to the neglect from British Railways. So, he's basically been given an overhaul at this point. Though, last I heard, he was almost ready for steam tests before finally returning to service. Well, that's good at least. From what I've seen from the increasing workload, you lot need all the help you can get. You can say that again. As much as he gets on my nerves, there's no denying how much of a hard worker he is. We will definitely be able to sleep better with his help. Oh, and before I forget, the lads of the works have a message for you and the volunteers. There's still no update on Clint's parts. The workers at Swindon can confirm that they were sent on the train Gregory was pulling and that it was supposed to be dropped off at the yard at Manifold Junction. And Gregory himself, his crew and the yard master confirms that he stored it where it was supposed to go before taking the train on. What happened after that is a complete mystery. Virgil's face fell. That's a shame. We were hoping he'd be ready for by the time of the grand reopening. Ah, uh, oh well. Unless that van's found, there's really nothing we can do. Unfortunately not. Just then, the guard blew his whistle and waved his flag, signaling Darius that it was time to continue the journey. Well, that's my cue to hand out. Good luck today, mate. See you tomorrow. You too. Have a good one. And with that, both engines set off in their respective ways, both looking forward to another fine day of work ahead of them. Over the next couple of days, the search for the missing van had expanded to the entire railway. Though Clint technically wasn't property of the railway, Mr. Hoff had insisted to the board that they gave their assistance in the search, insisting that it would only benefit them in the long run, as Clint's completion would open up for more space in the works which would drastically increase efficiency and capacity. This was all that was needed to convince the board, sending out dedicated search parties and inquiring about the whereabouts of the missing van. However, this yielded little to no results. One thing that did, however, was Pat's overhaul. A few days after the search parties had been formed, he emerged from the works looking as good as new, sporting a clean BR black livery as well as his new BR number of 44073. 
removing the connection between him and Kefili Castle once and for all. On the evening of his return to service, Pat was sat in the sheds at Colford talking with Clark, Riley, and Buck. The trio had been filling him in on all the recent events that had transpired, but mainly about the disappearance of Clint's parts. So you've looked all over the railway and still nothing? Pretty much, mate. We even checked the entire industrial estate. Do you have any idea how hard it is not to get in the way of Jim shunting while he's trying to comb the entire estate? I tell you, it's almost impossible. Yeah, no thank you. I'd hate to even get close to getting in his way. He takes his work way too seriously. Moving about like he owns the fucking place. Tell me about it. I was sent there to help him one day. Never again. What about there? Did you go up that way? He said, looking towards the abandoned branch. Oh, not this again, Pat. No one has been up there for years. There's even buffers there to block the way. It's impossible to get up there, even if we wanted to. Buck then suddenly looked up. Hang on. No, there isn't. Yes, there is. They've been there for years, Buck. Even you must have seen them by now. You're right. I have seen them. Then? But they're not blocking the way. Someone has moved them. I saw it yesterday when I got put into the loop to allow Rancy to pass with the express. I just didn't think anything of it. Well, at least not until now. Wait, seriously? This better not be another one of your pranks, Buck. Oh, I swear, I'll flood your firebox with sewage water. Clark, you couldn't catch up to me even if I was running backwards on one cylinder with my regulator jammed open, let alone now. And no, I'm not joking. Go see for yourself. In that case, fuck it. I'm gonna go exploring. Who's coming with me? Pat? No can do, lad. I have the mail train to pull in a few hours. Damn it. Buck. Fuck yeah, count me in. Uh, no. Buck, you're too heavy for the branch. The bridges will crumble under your weight. You calling me fat? You cheeky little- Guess that means you volunteer then. Come on, let's go! What? No, I- Ugh, fine. Someone has to look after you. Well, I'll be. They have been moved, and the bushes look like they've been forced apart by something big and heavy. Less detective work, more exploring! Alright, alright, I'm moving. As they reach the first bridge, Riley slowed his pace to a crawl before gently edging forward trying to ensure the bridge was safe. However, Clark stopped. Are you coming or what? I will as soon as you are over. Wait, why am I going first anyway? This was your idea. Because if the bridge isn't safe and gives way, I won't be the one in deep shit. Now come on, jump jump! Of course that's why. Riley soon made it across the bridge, signaling to Clark that it was safe to pass. He secretly hoped that he had weakened the bridge enough so the little shunter would take the plunge. Though this would mean that he'd be trapped, he figured it was a reasonable trade-off. However, he had no such luck as Clark reached the end of the bridge and buffered up to him, pushing the pannier further up the old dilapidated branch. While moving up the line, a light fog had rolled over the area. While it hadn't affected visibility too much, it was still enough to convince the engines that slowing down might be the best course of action, much to Clark's annoyance. Soon enough, the two engines had reached the top of the hill and continued on with a more brisk pace, feeling more confident in the integrity of the rails beneath their wheels. But suddenly, Riley slammed on his brakes, causing Clark to smash against his buffers. Ow! What the hell, man? This makes no sense. What is it? Clark looked ahead. He saw a set of points that divided the line. One went straight ahead and was just as rusty as the rest of the line but the track that went to the left looked as if it had just been laid not too long ago. I thought you guys said this place got abandoned during the war. It was. No one has been up here since late 44, early 45. I should know. Why? Because I used to run this line. Seems legit. Riley peered ahead into the unfamiliar section of track, making out a shape in the fog. 
He inched forwards, managing to make out exactly what it was he was seeing. Hello, what have we here? What is it, boy? Did Timmy fall down the well? No, you moron. Look, there's a van up here. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Hookers and dynamite? What? No, Clint's parts, you pencil. Oh, yeah, that makes more sense. Driver, go and check it out. Riley's driver quickly departed his cab, walking over to the van inspecting what was on the inside, but he quickly returned. I can't get into the ruddy thing. It's padlocked. Did you check the door on the other side? No, why would I? Bet you there's no lock on that. That seems a little convenient. Dude, it's a show about talking trains. Just go check out the fucking door, will you? Fine, jeez. Riley's driver walked to the other side of the van, and as predicted, it wasn't locked. He opened the door and peered inside, before walking back over to the engines again. Well, anything? No engine parts, that's for sure. Damn it! Well then, what was it? You see, that's the confusing part. It's filled with tools and mining equipment. I mean, they look quite new if you ask me. Definitely not made in the 40s. Well, that's strange. Yeah, almost as strange as your song choice on karaoke night last week. We're out all night to get you lucky. We're out all night to get you lucky. We're out all night to get you lucky. Let's not talk about that ever again. No deal. Can't. So what now? Do you want to continue or go back down? <sighs> I was afraid of that. Not too much further up ahead, they've reached another bridge. This one looked to be in an even worse state than the previous one. However, due to the fog, Riley and Clark didn't seem to notice as they crept onto the bridge. The combined weight of the two of them making it feel as if the bridge itself was swaying back and forth. Oh, I don't like this. Oh, stop being such a pussy. If we die, we die. This is the last time I go exploring with you. Could be the last time we go exploring, period. So enjoy it while it lasts. Your confidence is so reassuring. Wait, do you hear that? Did I hear what? Um, C -C Clark, you, you heard that, right? C -C Clark? Clark? Clark, wait up! 